So we were talking about powering transport with a redox reaction, pointing out that burning a hydrocarbon is, of course, a redox reaction. The same goes for a battery. It's a device for capturing the energy of a redox reaction. If we have a, a battery, very crudely, and an engine, what we're doing here with a battery is we're, we have a cathode and an anode. One of these things is providing the function of oxygen, and the other one is providing the equivalent of, of fuel. And there's a, there's a separator. And typically a separator in a lithium-ion battery is um, essentially a piece of plastic, which is an insulator to electrons. So it's, it's like any other plastic insulator. But it has a structure with, with very fine pores in it, which, are, which is a conductor of ions. So we have Li plus as, an, as a positive ion, and we have, of course, the, the, the electron. And the useful work is normally carried out here by a motor. Over, over here, we have the input of the cathode, which is uh, oxygen from the air. And we also have the anode, so some sort of hydrocarbon. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just say CH4, just to represent a hydrocarbon, because it's simple. Obviously, it's not CH4, it's a big long chain of the same <coughs> compound. Now, that could pretty much be drawn the same way. So you have a cathode and an anode, but you don't have a separator. One of the issues with one of the issues with this uh, concept here is if that melts catastrophically, then the the fuel and the oxygen equivalent can mix, and it, it, and it the explosive mixture or the, or the combustible mixture exists, all in, all in one package. So that the reason why we don't have thermal runaways with a, with a tank of fuel in the back of the car is because there, there is no oxygen equivalent, or at least not, not, not enough of it, to, to burn the fuel in the tank. But obviously if you, if you have an accident and you expose it to the air, it can mix and with a spark, you have a, have a problem. So, if we're talking about what's important about a battery, these are the classic things that people talk about um, when it comes to batteries and what's good and bad about them. And often they put cost per kilowatt hour as well. But I would propose that belongs under here. There's no point in having a battery that's in incredibly safe, for example, um, if it comes at the cost of power density or energy density or charge rate exceptions. So, to, to have a better value battery, something needs to improve without the cost of something else, otherwise it's not a better value proposition. So, coming to safety, one of the ways of making a battery safer is to uh, make the reactive materials in here less reactive. So instead of using a lithium cobalt oxide cathode, you'd use something like LiFePO4, um, lithium ferrite phosphate. So if you, if you attack the, the, the reactivity of the material to try and increase the safety, um, you immediately attack the energy density, which is why the batteries of, of the lithium ferrite phosphate type are heavy, mm. because energy, energy density relates directly to the, to the weight of the battery. Cycle life, radically, radically important thing, for all manner of reasons. So safety, you can deal with it at the pack level, with software, sophisticated electronics, and the structure of the pack, intermessing materials, active cooling, heat, etc. Most of the isolation of one's cell from others, so that you don't get a pack level thermal runaway, you, you can keep on pushing up the energy density. So, what I think is super fascinating about all this, 
is we're looking at cells here for, for cars that must have you know, probably a thousand, maybe five thousand, maybe more maximum cycle life. If you build that and it blows up on its first use, you have a cycle of one. If you can capture the energy of blowing that up. This, I think, is the way to think about an internal motion engine. It has the characteristics of, the, of, of a cell, the cathode and the nanode, and the cell that it makes blows up on the first time that the cell is made. So what we're doing here with an engine is a, it, we're, it's actually a battery-making machine. That's, I think, the correct way to think about an internal combustion engine. It's repeatedly <laughs> building the battery and experiencing and deliberately causing a thermal runaway of the battery that it creates. So what you're trying then to capture here with the, with the piston, yeah. effectively the heat energy, the expansion of the gases. So what you do is you build a battery, it has a thermal runaway, and you toss it out of the exhaust port. Then you build another one, over and over again. Build lots and lots and lots and lots of batteries and blow them up, one after the other. That, that process, by the way, is a classic case of something that should have centralized mass production. And what it makes, ideally, should last more than once in use. For example, a thousand times. And when it's finished being used, the end product is not thrown away. It can be recycled entirely. There is such a thing called a lithium air battery. So instead of having this entire cathode here, you can make a matrix of lithium metal and put in O2 instead. And the energy density of that is 11,600 watt hours per kilogram. The actual energy density of gasoline. <coughs> 12,200 watt hours per kilogram. You could build an internal combustion engine burning lithium. You could somehow liquefy or powderize, um, emulsify or whatever lithium metal that you mine out of the ground. You could bring it into this machine, you could cause the thermal runaway. And you produce about the same power. And what would come out of the exhaust port would be um, pre predominantly lithium oxide, Li2O. You need two lithiums for one oxygen. So what would come out of the exhaust port would be a white powder, um, which is a, you know, amounts at about 2,600 degrees Celsius. So it's an extremely stable compound, solid compound. And if we ran engines like that, we'd cover the world with something that looks a bit like snow. But the amount of power, the, the, the entire cycle will be exactly the same. Mine the lithium, put it in the engine, dump the products of a single use, temporarily made cell onto the, onto the environment. Except that if you did it that way, you'd see it, and you'd cover the world with white. That way you'd actually be reflecting more sunlight up rather than trapping it in carbon dioxide. At the moment, we have cars that are ready to compete with internal combustion engines with approximately 260 to 380, and we're, we're probably at about the 300 mark, at about the 300 watt hour per kilogram. We have roughly equivalent vehicles. It's, in fact, some benefits when it comes to power density for acceleration. The, the potential, where this can go, is in that direction. There's the, there's the theoretical limit of what is possible with a lithium-ion battery. And it's astronomically more than it is now. What, what Tesla, in fact, is, is doing, they're starting to add uh, silicon, um, which has, a, which has a, a greater capacity to, uh, to absorb lithium ions. They can manage it with a, with a percentage of carbon and a percentage of silicon. 
So I think rather than rather than discussing um, gasoline or diesel as a as an energy product, I think it's actually interesting to look at it as a, as a mining product. There is an equivalence, there is an absolutely direct equivalence there with the process of mining things from the ground and building one of these to mining things out of the ground and putting them in here. That's it. BMW 328i has on uh, US EPA 27 mile per gallon of gasoline as a, as a combined cycle, which is 3.7 gallons per Curve weight, 1582 kilograms. Service life, if we say 300,000 miles. An average of 27 miles per gallon with no engine degradation. If you divide that all together, the weight of the gasoline that this car is consuming over 300,000 miles is 3333 kilograms. So there's this, the battery weight in the lifetime of this car that is non recyclable completely is 30 tons. 19.17 times the weight of the car. Mining product consumed for redox reaction. The recycling potential, potential of this entire the recycling potential of this entire combination is 4.96% at the end of life. If you if you recycle the entire car, if that's 100% recyclable, 4.96% overall that you get back at the end of the uh, in, in, end of the deal after that car's done. With the EV, if you can recycle the entire thing, 100%. Weight of the batteries in a Tesla Model S that we actually have numbers for, 544 kilograms. Versus that, to perform the same function over 300,000 miles, this is a continuous process of producing 19 times the weight of the cars on the road in gasoline out of the ground. Mining, which is directly equivalent to mining lithium and cobalt and nickel and the other components that are 100% recyclable in there. And this is catastrophic economic nonsense. There is absolutely no way that the need to make that versus the need to make that can ever fly. That will beat that. Simply by the total amount of work, 90% wasted. With no economic gain from the waste. And the, in the, and the energy inputs that need to go into this one are not so very different from the external energy inputs that need to go into this one to produce the gas. So, what we have here is a, I think, a, a, a completely unarguable case that it's just a better way to make a car to do that. And any possible advances here is, is historic. It, this is a historic method of doing things. The economies of scale that allow you to do this are not even relevant to the ability to do that. You can only compete in, to make engines at the moment if you have a huge company. But you can undercut the price by doing this. And the absolute reason why is that. The, the total amount of activity to do the same thing, which is to get transport out of a redox reaction.